Join us now on Flickr at flickr.com slash groups slash art of photography. Welcome to the Art of Photography. I'm Ted Forbes. Today we're going to do part two in our lens discussion here. And today what I want to do is talk about what lenses are made of. If you were to open a lens, what are you going to find inside? Okay, now lenses are made up of a series of optics called elements. And elements look like oh, little lenses themselves. And uh, basically, uh, there are two types of classifications um, when you're talking about lens elements. The first classification is what you, what's known as a simple lens. And a simple lens contains only one element. And these are usually found on cheaper, low-budget cameras, plastic cameras, uh, old box cameras. The Holga is a single element lens. It's a simple lens. And then you have the compound lenses, which contain more than one element. Okay, now how many elements can these contain? Well, it depends from lens to lens. Some of the more expensive zoom lenses uh, contain up to 20 elements or sometimes more. Now why would you use more than one element in a lens? Well lenses by nature in theory you can project and refract light onto your focal plane using only one element and that in theory is why Holgas work which is why box cameras work all those kinds of things but uh, you know in reality they're kind of guilty of every lens distortion you're possibly going to be able to find in photography which is kind of cool and at the same time kind of weird too because if you're looking for a perfect photo that you're going to put on a magazine cover something like that maybe it's not what you're going for but if you're going for kind of an arty style and you really want to embrace a lot of those imperfections and distortions uh, the, that's why the Holga is right up a lot of people's alley because it, it tends to showcase all of those now um, lenses are not lens elements are not ever perfect by design because you get these distortions so there are different kinds of lens elements and when you group and combine these elements you can such bend the light so you get rid of a lot of those imperfections and you create you correct a lot of those distortions so what I want to do is take a minute here and let's talk about the various types of lens elements okay so we're gonna look at a uh, website here um, to use of our illustration of, uh, of lens elements here and I am on the Canon Camera Museum website which is a page on Canon's website and the URL to get there is canon.com slash camera dash museum and this is a great resource for all things Canon and they have obviously a lot of specifications and stuff on both uh, current currently in production products and stuff that they don't make anymore which is kind of a nice resource but if I go over here to camera hall and uh, we go down and select lenses <clears throat> we'll go by series name here I'm gonna select EF mount this is what's currently in production and let's select uh, standard medium telephoto and I'll pick just the standard 1.4 50 millimeter lens and we get a page for this with some specifications on it and you see down here in this list of specs that there are two that we're going to talk about today there's lens construction in groups and lens construction by element and we can see that there are six groups to this lens and seven elements now what does this mean well let's go to the block diagram here and uh, we get a cross section of the lens since I don't actually have a lens that I'm willing to rip open for this demonstration but you can see that if you took the lens apart uh, there are indeed seven lens elements and they all line up on this on the lens axis which runs down the middle now when we get into aspherical lenses uh, there are ways to craft lenses where the axis is not directly down the middle and that can be really handy for correcting distortions too but for our purposes here you can see that indeed there are seven elements running across uh, running through the lens here and they're made out of glass usually uh, I'm sure they are in this case and you can see that, that towards the back here you have these two elements that are stuck together and they're probably cemented together there's no air in between them and this is uh, known as a lens grouping okay uh, where you take more than one element and you combine them to make a group now it's also a group can be a lens on its own so you can see here that we have seven elements but they're in six groups because these two are connected together and they're connected together to uh, to manipulate the refraction and take care of some of the distortions you might find in the lens so let's look at lens elements specifically and I have an EPS document that I put together here and you can see that these are the six basic types of lens elements that can be combined now what happens is if you look at a lens element light will come through the front side of the element and the lens element manipulates that light and refracts it and bends it and it comes out the backside in a different configuration and we're gonna get more into this in a second but let's look at what the basic types are um, you have basically they're they're kind of uh, named by the type of side they have so if you you know you're looking at this from its side uh, if this if you have a uh, concave surface or excuse me a convex surface it bends out concave surfaces bend in like this last element here if you remember from high school geometry it bends in like a cave so that would be concave so the first element on the far left here 
This is what's known as a bioconvex element because there are two convex sides, so bioconvex. This next one here is a planoconvex. It has one convex side and one plane, so it's planoconvex. Let's skip over these middle two for just a second. We're going to come back. These are the meniscus lenses. Uh, then you have a planoconcave, obviously, and then a bioconcave, two concave sides. Now the two in the middle, these are both meniscus lenses. Okay, and so these are a lot like what you're going to see in eyeglasses, and they're going to be what you see in uh, single or simple lenses like that on a Holga or a box camera, something like that, that just contains one element. And basically what they're going to do is the light comes through the front side, and they have two concave sides, um, and the light will project back and all come to a center point that is the focal plane. That's where your digital sensor is, or your film sensor in the Holga or something like that excuse me, film sensor, it's where your film is. Uh, so anyway, so that's your focal distance. Now, when you focus the lens, you move this back and forth and you can focus on different points of light that would be in your scene on the front side. And so you can manipulate what that focal point is. And you'll see on here that the uh, front side on this one has a steeper curve than the back side. So this is what's known as a positive meniscus lens. The second lens is a negative meniscus lens. The back side is a much steeper curve than the front side in this case. So that's basically the six lens types. Um, there's also a spherical lenses, which we'll get into later because they are a little more advanced, came along later. But this is the uh, six elements that we're going to be dealing with for our purposes here. A lot of times it's real common when you see people that get really caught up in equipment, especially when they're pouring a lot of money into their equipment, uh, that they're always looking for this perfect lens or this perfect thing. And I will say this, that there's a lot to be said for dealing with plastic cameras, simple lenses. Uh, you get kind of a soul to your image that you don't get when everything is perfectly corrected. And uh, I just want to make sure that I've, I've made that point that, that spending a lot of money on equipment doesn't always mean you're going to get the best results. And certainly I don't think in any instance is it going to make you a better photographer. I've seen very wonderful photos with, with, if you really look closely, you're going to see problems with the lenses and distortions and things like that that may not be perfect. But I will make the point too that, that I've never ever seen an incredible shot and held that kind of thing against it. I've also seen the opposite where you have these, these beautiful shots because technically they're perfect, the lens looks wonderful, the camera looks wonderful, the picture is sharp, it's clean, it's, it's, uh, the colors are well saturated, it's vibrant, and it's just not a great picture. And uh, you don't tend to look back a second time at those. So anyway, with all this stuff, take it with a grain of salt. But uh, anyway, I hope that helps, and we're going to talk some more about lenses in the next couple podcasts. So this has been The Art of Photography, and thanks for watching.